As humans, we have an innate need to feel like we belong, to feel connected, particularly in childhood. And when this doesn't happen, we internalize this concept of ourselves as being bad, being unlovable, because we don't feel seen and we don't feel heard. And consequently, we develop this sense of shame about ourselves and see ourselves as very unworthy. And this manifests itself in so many different ways in adulthood. We tend to create all of these personas as an attempt to regulate ourselves and as an attempt to get the approval that we always sought in childhood. And we go about this in so many different ways. And oftentimes these ways are very subtle. We can be people pleasers, constantly apologizing, constantly feeling guilt or shame, constantly abandoning ourselves in relationships or in in work situations, feeling very detached from ourselves, feeling very detached from life, um, always feeling a desire to fix other people, always feeling a desire to control other people. And then you have, I suppose, the more insidious ways it can manifest itself, such as addiction, depression, really chronic anxiety, eating disorders, personality disorders. And it can just continue on in this theme throughout our life and ultimately all of these defenses and coping mechanisms are an attempt at regulating pain, an attempt at regulating very strong emotions which unfortunately we weren't equipped with the tools to navigate when we were younger and we became hyper vigilant as a consequence because again for a child to feel like as if they are invalid and for them to feel unloved is extremely distressing and our nervous system tends to adjust to what it is continuously exposed to. So if a child is continuously emotionally neglected, then they move into this state of fight or flight. They become hypervigilant and that's very difficult to switch off in adulthood. So they become very wary and very paranoid and feel like as if they continuously have to control their environment and control other people in an attempt to feel any way it's normal. And oftentimes chaos becomes the normality. So consequently, the choices that the adult makes bring them into further chaos. So the relationships that they choose can be very unhealthy. The situations that they find themselves in can be very unhealthy. And it's recognizing that a lot of these choices are made at a very subconscious level. However, in order for you to be able to do things differently, you have to recognize the patterns that you are recreating. You have to recognize the pain that you are experiencing, the pain from your past that you have carried with you that is causing you to cultivate a life that doesn't meet your needs and that is causing you to detach from yourself, to detach from your authenticity and to detach from the person it is that you need to be. Because again, what we're doing is in all of the choices that we make, we are continuing to abandon ourselves. We're continuing to judge ourselves and we tend to extrapolate that judgment and abandonment to other people. We find ourselves very cynical and very critical and very jealous and envious. And again, these are not traits that we particularly particularly like in ourselves. So we end up feeling bad for how we feel, not recognizing that this is a consequence of our childhood, that ultimately we're just trying to regulate, we're just trying to find a way to create the love it is that we need, the acceptance it is that we need through very unhealthy mechanisms. And I suppose it's about recognizing that all your choices are going to continue on in this manner unless you recognize that passion and unless you make a conscious effort to try to heal that inner child, to try and recognize all of the ways in which your ego is trying to defend you, to, to defend you from pain, to defend you from further rejection and to meet it with compassion and to recognize that you don't have to sustain all of these defenses, that you don't have to continue on with these behaviors to feel safe. 
you know, that you can start showing up for yourself. And that is what the healing process is all about. It's basically trying to show up for yourself internally, finding awareness of your triggers, finding awareness for the pain that you experienced in your past and the way in which it is impacting on your interpretation of the world and the choices that you are making and the relationships that you are finding yourself in. And being aware of your emotional experience and learning how to ride that wave and again we assume that emotions are going to last forever they don't they're a relatively short experience about 90 seconds if we just allow them to pass through us and yet when we have experienced trauma in our past uh, we tend to I suppose, expand on our emotional experience by constructing stories that are very catastrophic and very unhelpful and that are very painful for us. And yet we are very attached to them, you know, and it's recognizing that as long as we are in that defensive place, we are never going to be able to expect or accept other alternatives are to be able to see other people's perspective because again when you're in that pain you're all about the ego you're all about me 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 so it makes it very difficult for you to see any alternative and I suppose it's allowing yourself to feel the feelings but then challenging some of your self-limiting beliefs and challenging some of the unhelpful constructs that you have going on and some of the assumptions that you have about the world about relationships and about yourself and I suppose it's recognizing your humanity throughout this process I mean oftentimes people come to the healing journey just wanting a quick fix and an immediate solution and this isn't necessarily going to happen I mean healing is a lifelong process you are trying to undo um, ways of thinking and ways of being that are all you know and that takes time and it takes time tolerance and it takes forgiveness and it takes patience and I suppose it's giving yourself all of those things so that you can give them to other people it's about having self-compassion so that you can com be compassionate with others it's about not judging yourself so that you're not as judgmental and cynical and critical of others and that you're not repeating the patterns and the legacy of your childhood you know and it's doing the little things on a daily basis there's no kind of silver bullet in this process it's basically showing up for yourself doing the disciplines that are required to feel a little bit differently and to be more aware of your internal experience and it's also as I said being very forgiving with yourself you have to forgive yourself for who you've been you've had to forgive yourself for how you think and you have to forgive yourself for the mistakes that you're going to make along the way because again you're going to make them I mean there is no guaranteed solution it's just a day-by-day -day process and all all you can do is continue to return to yourself, return to your heart, meet yourself with compassion and forgiveness and try to extrapolate that um, compassion and forgiveness onto others also. And it's a beautiful process. I mean, it's about learning to see yourself in a whole different light and then learning to see the world in a whole different light also. So it is so worth traveling. But again, we have to be very realistic about the work that involved the commitment that is required and the difficulty of it because it can oftentimes be painful it's not a walk in the park and as well as that there are going to be rough times it's there's no quick fix there's no guaranteed solution it's just about committing to be the best possible version of yourself each and every day and I know that's a bit of a cliche but it's so true I mean you can be kind you can be benevolent or you can continue to tear yourself apart on a daily basis the choice is always yours so if you want to work with me on an individual basis get in touch with me on my website it's fundamentals.ie